Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include EU strikes deal on extra 2013 budget funds despite UK protest. Cameron and Concrew conspire to create a European shambles. EU to propose duties on Chinese solar panels. In Europe, another woeful economic forecast. Plus, in our letters section, the EU cosmetics regulations. I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. First up, from our homepage. Another €7.3 billion Euros is due to be added to the EU's budget for 2013 under a compromise reached between member states in Brussels. The European Council agreed the figure after the UK objected to the European Commission's original request for €11.2 billion Euros to settle unpaid bills. Nonetheless, under the qualified majority voting system, the Council has gathered enough support to ensure the extra funding. OK. Point 1. So the EU Commission also has an overspend problem if it cannot settle its debts and is requesting £11.2 billion to cover them. Point 2. The £7.3 billion agreed is still £4 billion short, so that means someone or some group is not going to get paid. Point 3. The qualified majority voting mechanism provides, under EU treaty rules, the ability for the EU to overrule member state wishes, and it has done so in this case. However, as the article goes on to state, it would appear that Britain, Netherlands, Finland and Denmark are planning to defy the ruling and will not back the extra funding. <laughs> we'll see. The government must have surely lost all connection with the British people. This article looks at the sleight of hand, lies and downright deceit going on in the Conservative Party as it squirms to save its own skin. The people in Britain have had a growing concern and extending list of questions in regard to European Union and our membership of it. Sold on the idea of a single market, which would bring about greater prosperity for all, but what they really got was a dark and powerful government cabal that meets in secret, writes rules and regulations affecting everything, and creates more and more bureaucratic public sector workload that adds little value to services already in place. Now, as shown in this article, we have either absolute lies or absolute stupidity as Mr Cameron tries to appease his party members with the introduction of a bill that would bind the next parliament to hold a referendum in 2017. Note he is trying to appease his party members, completely ignoring the electorate. But it gets even worse. Under UK constitutional law, no parliament may bind its successor. Thus, David Cameron is either A, an ignorant fool, or B, a deliberate deceiver. In either case, if this is who you want representing the best interests of Britain... The EU's trade chief will recommend placing punitive import duties on billions of euros of solar panels from China. China, which had barely any solar panel production capacity a decade ago, exported more than 21 billion euros in panels to the European Union in 2011. As this regulation progresses, we will keep a watchful eye on it. Analysis at this point suggests two critical impact points. The heavily subsidised renewable energy sector, with financial implications for domestic users on the Green Deal, and, given the large economic interest to China, there will be political and economic ramifications for such a policy. Now, one should note that many market makers suggest that China is already quickly positioning itself economically to challenge the US dollar as the world reserve currency. So things could get very interesting, especially around trading arrangements. The economic outlook for the European Union has deteriorated and the recession and unemployment blighting the euro area is expected to worsen, the European Commission warned. The outlook for the jobless in Europe is equally grim. Unemployment is expected to reach 11.1% across the European Union and 12.2% in the eurozone, this article states. 
However, an archive article from six weeks back, based upon United Nations statistics, showed employment running at 57.5%, leaving a non-working population of 42.5%. Probably better to make up your own mind on this one. Take a look on the high street and note the number of closed shops and the number of additional charity shops that have filled the spaces left by other failed businesses. Charity shops rely on volunteer workers and of course do not usually pay commercial rents on the properties that they use. Olly Wren, the EU Commissioner for Economic and Monetary Affairs, said in a statement Friday that leaders needed to do whatever it takes to overcome the unemployment crisis in Europe. Hmm. Well, Ollie, sounds like a reasonable plan. Can I suggest that our leaders exit the EU and immediately send delegates across the globe to assess world needs for products, resources and services so we can get some cash in before we all go skint? In your letters, we have a beauty today in regard to the EU cosmetics regulations. Peter writes, Once again the EU sets out to destroy private enterprise and the little man-stroke woman trying to make an honest living. All those stay-at-home mums making soaps and other smellies will be forced out of business. And who will gain? The multinationals, of course. Those who have the power and money to lobby Brussels. Bloody disgrace! Uh, thanks for that letter, Peter. I do like it when people take a solid position on things. You can read Peter's full letter with supporting detail on these new regulations that come into force next month via the link below. Today in our video library, as you know, we have written and produced a new documentary, Betrayed, which we have submitted to the Operation Paul Revere contest at Infowars.com. We thought it would be interesting to take a look at some of the other videos that have been produced. And so through the month of May, I will pick out a daily Operation Paul Revere contest entry and provide a link to it on YouTube. Speaking of YouTube, you could really help us a great deal with our documentary and contest submission by subscribing to our channel, rating our film Betrayed, either like or dislike, but I'd prefer like please, and most importantly sharing it with as many people as you possibly can. So without further ado, today's video which I have added to our Operation Paul Revere YouTube playlist is 8 Steps to Empire, The Culture Wars. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the e Unit. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. Are you looking for a public speaker for your event? Our public speakers are happy to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area at no cost. If you would like to add interest and value to your group event, then get in touch with us via the word section of our website. Join us in our live question time style online show, The Unit Interactive. Broadcast live on our website, theunit.com, and globally via thehangoutshow.com. Join our community on Google+, and you can be part of the wider public voice, united in freedom, liberty, and independence. Simply join our community, the unit on Google+. Links to the community page are below. <laughs>